Now, special thing about colligative property uh, is that it depends on the number of solute particles, right? Depends. Only on the number of solute particles, and these are also known as aka democratic democratic properties. Since they depend only on the, since they depend only on the number of solute particles and not on the nature of the solute particle. There are four colligative properties which we have learned. Is right. There are four colligative properties. First, that we are going to learn. Is the relative uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure the relative lowering of vapor pressure that is also known as RLVP? Secondly, we are going to learn about elevation and boiling point. Elevation in boiling point. Next, we have to learn. Achha, elevation boiling point is given by delta Tb. B is in the subscript, by the way. Delta Tb. Third is depression in freezing point. That is given by delta Tf. And fourth is the osmotic pressure. That is denoted by phi. Okay. Now, before relating lowering of liquid pressure, just to remind you guys, we have done solution. We have seen different types of solution. Okay, so we have seen a solution in which gas is added to liquid, and in this case, the vapor pressure or the pressure above the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of solute because gas is far more escapable and gas escapes more easily. That is why P is equal to KH into chi B, that is Henry's law. Then, when we had liquid plus liquid, then both, both liquid A and liquid B. Both of them will be responsible for the both the liquids will be responsible for the pressure at the above the solution. So total pressure is equal to P naught A chi A plus P naught B chi B. So it is depending on both the concentrations, concentration of solute as well as the solvent. But when we have solid plus liquid. That means solid is the solute and liquid is the solvent. In that case, the pressure will only depend on the mole fraction of solvent that is A. Because solid, it is not going to vaporize. The only thing which is able to vaporize here is the liquid. And that is why pressure above the solution or the pressure of solution will be directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent. Okay. So starting from here, we can write out the topic that is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Relative lowering of vapor pressure RLVP. So, obviously, if we have added solute particles in liquid, then this is the surface, and here the evaporation was happening, right? It was getting vaporized. The solvent molecules were vaporized. Now, when we add solid, then there will be some solute particles on the surface. So, the solute particles will take place of the solvent particles and that is why we will be having less evaporation or less vaporization of the solvent particles. Essentially speaking, the vapor pressure is going to decrease. The vapor pressure of the solution is going to decrease. So please write. The first observation that we saw is the vapor pressure of solution with 
नॉन वोलेटाइल सोल्यूट नॉन वोलेटाइल मीन सॉल्यूट नॉन वोलेटाइल सोल्यूट इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू the mole fraction of the mole fraction of solvent the mole fraction of solvent that is why the pressure of solution it is directly proportional to the mole fraction of solvent and this will be equal to p not a phi a now each and every solution it is known by its solute not by its solvent so you have nibu ka sharbat hai ya ruwabza hai it does not depend on water it depends on what solute we have added and we know that chi a will be equal to 1 minus chi p so i can rewrite this equation as ps is equal to p not a 1 minus chi b this can be written as p not a minus p not a chi b here we have ps now ps and we have p not a so what i can do is i can get this uh, here you can write it like this p not a chi b is equal to p not a minus p of solution so this is known as the lowering of vapor pressure so initially the vapor pressure was p a p not a that means the vapor pressure of pure solvent and then you added solute and we got solution so in solution we will have this vapor pressure so this is actually the lowering of vapor pressure this expression is known as lowering of vapor pressure now if i have chi b this will be equal to p not a minus p of solution divided by p not a. this is known as this is the lowering divided by the initial content na lowering divided by the original it is known as relative lowering ha isi ko kya bolte hain rlvp relative lowering of vapor pressure this is the expression so relative lowering of vapor pressure this part this is known as relative lowering of vapor pressure which is equal to the mole fraction of the solute so this is the expression that you have to remember mole fraction of the solute is equal to p not a minus p s divided by p not a okay again uh, for the case of numericals we have to do some adjustments we write it for numericals this basically you can say that this is the definition of rlv acha now let us suppose what is chi b and uh, what is p not a minus p s divided by p so chi b is number of moles of solute divided by the number of moles of solvent plus the number of moles of solute that is chi b mole fraction of the solute it will be equal to p not a minus p of solution divided by p not a now i will reverse both of them that means we are going to the reciprocal both the side so we will get na plus nb divided by nb which will be equal to p not a divided by p not a minus ps minus ps now further what i can do i can show it like this na divided by nb plus nb upon nb which will be equal to p not a divided by p not a minus ps now from here you can see nb and nb can cancel both each of them and it, this will give you one now further i can write number of moles of a divided by number of moles of b will be equal to i will take this one to that side it will become minus one p not a divided by p not a minus ps this will be minus one now i will take the lcm now na upon nb this will be equal to p not a now see my p not a minus 1 will be equal to minus p not a minus ps minus 1 will be plus ps whole divided by p not a minus ps now as you can see we can cancel these p not a minus p not a will be zero and the remaining will be number of moles of a divided by number of moles of b 
is equal to the P of solution divided by P naught A minus Ps. Now you can further reciprocal it and write it like this NB divided by NA is equal to P naught A minus Ps divided by Ps. Okay. So this is the expression that you are going to use when you are solving for numericals for relative lowering of vapor pressure. This is the expression that you are going to use. And because this is going to make things very easy, and especially, please write, use the above equation when amount of Solute or solvent is asked. Okay. By the way, you can further simplify this. You can expand this here. I can see number of moles of solute will be equal to the given mass of solute divided by the molar mass of the solute. Okay. Divided by the molar mass of the solute. Multiplied by Na will be the given mass of solvent divided by molar mass of solvent that will go above will become MP. Yes. Sorry, MA, molar mass of this uh, solvent, which will be equal to P naught A minus PS divided by PS. Okay. So you can use this expression directly also if you have been given the number of uh, masses of different different items. Okay. Please write this down. Let me know once you're done. Anyone still writing? That's it, just. Dense. But if no one else is writing, then we can move on. Then you can write the graph of uh, relative low, uh, sorry, relative lowering of vapor pressure. So in graph. Okay, see, we're talking about the vapor pressure here. So pressure of the solution. And here we have the mole fraction of A. This increasing in this way. So if I have starting from here, chi A will be equal to zero, and here the chi A will have a maximum value of one. When chi A is equal to zero, chi B will be equal to one. And when chi A is equal to one, chi B will be equal to zero. So obviously, when we have non-volatile solute, that means we have a solid solute. Solid will not vaporize, and the mole fraction at that point will be sorry, and the pressure at that point will be zero. And as we increase the amount of as we increase the amount of solvent molecule. The vapor pressure is going to increase, 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 and it will reach a value which will be equal to P naught A. This part will be P naught A when the mole fraction of this solution it is equal to one. Okay, so this is the graph for RLVP. I hope you have made this graph. Yeah. 
going out, we'll see. Second is elevation in boiling point. Sir, can you show the graph? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, elevation in boiling point. So, obviously, I hope you guys remember what is boiling point. Boiling point, it is a temperature at which the vapor pressure, it is equal to 1 atm or the atmospheric pressure. At normal condition, it will be equal to 1 atm. Temperature at which vapor pressure is equal to 1 atm. So, when we have added solid solute in a non-volatile solution, the vapor pressure is decreased as you have seen relative lowering of vapor pressure. It says that only you know, at the vapor pressure of a non-volatile solution is less than that of the solvent. And what boils? Obviously, solid is not going to boil. What is going to boil? The liquid part is going to boil. And the vapor has vapor pressure has been decreased. That is why we would require a higher amount of temperature, a higher temperature in order to boil it. So please write here. Vapor pressure of a non-volatile of a non-volatile of a solution of a solution with of a solution with non-volatile solute decreases therefore higher temperature is required to reach 1 atm, the vapor pressure of 1 atm. It requires a higher temperature to reach the vapor pressure of 1 atm. Okay. Now, this increase in temperature is known as the elevation in boiling point. So, this increase in temperature of boiling point is called Elevation in boiling point. Okay. So obviously the boiling point changes. So delta T B this will be equal to the boiling point of solution, which is higher, minus the boiling point of the solution, which is T naught B, which is lower. Now, if you look at the graph, it's just one note here, please, right? Difference of temperature in degree Celsius and Kelvin is same. Degree Celsius and Kelvin is same. That means, for example, if I go from zero degree Celsius to five degree Celsius, so what is the change? Changes of five degree Celsius. Similarly, if I go from two seventy three. 278. Now that is a Kelvin scale change. So here also, if you see what is the change, it is of 5 Kelvin. So this 5 and here is it's also 5. Even though, even though if you see here we have 0 written and 5 written, the change is always the same. So you can write delta T B in degree Celsius also and also in terms of you can write also in terms of uh, Kelvin. Okay, so both are fine. If you have been given in terms of Kelvin, no need to if you calculated delta T B in Kelvin, you can just write degree Celsius also, it's not going to change anything. All of you got this, yes, no, please tell me. If the delta TB, the delta TB, it is equal to, let us suppose, 5 Kelvin. Then in degree Celsius, delta TB, it is also equal to 5 degree Celsius. Okay. So all of, both of these are same change in temperatures. So when you are talking about change in the temperature, so for 5, you don't have to add 273 or something like that. And I hope you have understand by this particular example. Whenever you get confused, please look at this example and then you can understand. It is because the scale is same. And so one unit degree Celsius, it is equal to one unit Kelvin. And 298 से 299 temperature change हो रहा है. Same. मतलब एक degree Celsius बढ़ रहा है ना. तो same change हो रहा है. अगर आप 3 degree से आप 4 degree जाएंगे, तब भी कितना change हो रहा है. एक कहीं change. So that scale is same. Okay. बस वही फर्क है. फर्क क्या है यहाँ पे देखिए. और चीज से आपको हम समझा देते हैं कोशिश कर रहे हैं आई होप यू गाइस विल अंडरस्टैंड इट 
this is let us suppose the scale of kelvin and this is the scale of this is the scale of uh, this mari jab kelvin hai pehla wala so kelvin and this one is degree celsius okay so the difference is that kelvin it starts from 273 jo yahan pe iska 273 hai wahi uska yahan pe kya hai here it is zero hai na ab uske baad jab aayega agla number maan lijiye yahan pe aa raha hai 274 वो जीरो डिग्री का क्या हो जाएगा वन हो जाएगा इन स्केल एंड इज वन डिग्री इन सेल्सियस स्केल तो ये देखिए दिस इज द डिफरेंस ये डिफरेंस क्या दोनों में सेम ठीक है दिस डिफरेंस इज सेम चलिए फिर आई होप इतना समझ में आया क्यों नहीं समझ में आया तो याद रख लीजिएगा डिफरेंस में यू डोंट नीड टू एड टू सेवेंटी थ्री टू कन्वर्ट फ्रॉम डिग्री सेल्सियस टू कैलविन स्केल ना मूविंग ऑन प्लीज राइट द ग्राफ ऑफ graph of delta tv is graph of delta tv now this graph is quite important so let us suppose we have something like this okay now here we have vapor pressure of the solution and here we have temperature and here we have temperature so obviously when the vapor pressure it is equal to 1 atm then the boiling starts right so this 1 atm is an important line so i will just give it some importance like this and maybe i can just make it a bit dotted okay now once it is dotted i will uh, here okay so let us suppose this is the okay let us suppose this is the uh, this is for solvent molecule this is for solvent molecule as we are increasing the temperature what is happening as we are increasing the temperature as we are increasing the temperature vapor pressure is also increasing so this is what this is for solvent now let us suppose we have the same thing सी को ले लेते हैं ना दिस इज बेटर वी हैव सेम थिंग बट वी विल कलर दिस ब्लू एंड दिस इज फॉर द सॉल्यूशन सो ऑब्वियसली प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ सॉल्यूशन विल बी ऑब्वियसली व्हाट लोअर ठीक है इट विल बी लोअर बिकॉज़ रिलेटिव लोअरिंग ऑफ वेपर प्रेशर एंड दैट इज व्हाई इट विल स्टार्ट समवेयर हियर लाइक दिस if i increase this length here theek okay. hai it is starting here as you can see this green one that is for our solvent it requires what temperature it requires this particular temperature to boil and if i talk about the if i talk about the solution it takes this temperature to boil so obviously you, i hope you can see that this is the difference right and this is the delta tv so what is happening when we move from solvent to solute when we are adding solute then what is going to happen in the solution as you can see there is an increase in the boiling point okay so this is delta tv this is delta tv what is this part this is t not b and this is the boiling point of the solution okay now experimentally it was seen that if i add more amount of solute then the elevation is larger and for a particular concentration term it was seen that it is directly proportional 
So that is delta T B. It is directly Sir. proportional to molality of this. Yeah, tell me. So this line blue line is solution. Sorry. So this uh, blue color is uh, of solution. Yeah, yeah, correct. It's for solution. Delta T B is directly proportional to M. And if I remove the proportionality sign, I will get this as KB into M. Now, again, the same thing, delta TB will be equal to molality. If you remember the formula, it is equal to KB into WB. This WB into 1000 divided by molar mass of the solute multiplied by the mass of solvent. And this will be in kg. So this will be in grams because we have divided by thousand already. Right? So this is the formula that we are going to generally use for the we are going to use for uh, numericals. Now, what is this KB? You know, WB, MBW, and everything. What is this KB? KB is known as molal elevation constant, or it is known as molal boiling point elevation constant. Another name is epolioscopic constant. E polioscopic constant. Epolioscopic constant. Okay. So write this down. Let me know once you're done. Anyone still writing? Okay. Yeah. Right next, molar boiling point elevation constant. We will write a few, uh, we will write the definition and then the unit also. Is right? Molal elevation constant, or you can molal boiling point elevation constant, molal elevation constant shown by KB. Now, what is KB? Please say KB is the elevation and boiling point, KB is the elevation in boiling point. When molality of solution is unity. Unity comes from one hota, na? Unity comes from one hota, na? As we have seen, na? Delta TB, kya hota hai? it is equal to KB into M. When M will become one, when M will become one, Delta TB will be equal to KB. Na? So that is why we have defined it like that. KB is the elevation in boiling point KB is equal to what the elevation in boiling point when KB it is equal to the elevation in boiling point when when molarity is equal to one when molarity it is equal to one now the unit so for unit what you need to do KB will be equal to delta TB 
divided by m. The unit for delta T B will be Kelvin. The unit for molarity will be, it will be equal to mole per kg. Now kg inverse will go above and the unit of Kp will become Kelvin. Kelvin is always in capital K. And then kg, kg is in small k, Kelvin kg per mole. This is the unit of Kp. Write a small question that was asked in board examination. Find the boiling point of a solution. Containing. Zero point five two grams of. Glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6 dissolved in dissolved in 80.2 gram of H2O. Given Kf of uh, Kb of water. Kb of water is one is zero point five two Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. So let us see what is the information that they have given. First of all, the amount of solute it is given. It is equal to how much? Zero point five two grams. Zero point five two grams. Then the amount of solvent WA it is given as eight point or eighty point two grams. Then they have given the uh, KB. KB it is equal to zero point five two Kelvin kg per mole. Now the mass of the solute this is equal to how much mass of the solute sorry molar mass of the solute will be equal to one eighty grams per mole. This has not been given but you can easily calculate by using carbon for carbon will be having twelve hydrogen two. Uh, hydrogen, sorry, hydrogen we have one and oxygen is going to be three. So 180 grams per mole. And then you can easily find delta Tb, right? Delta Tb will be equal to Kb into Wb into 1000 divided by the molar mass of the solute multiplied by the mass of the solvent in grams. So Kb is 0 0.52 multiplied by molar mass of the sorry, given mass of the solute is 0 0.52 both of them are 0 0.52 0 0.52 multiplied by 1000 all divided by molar mass of the solute is 180 this will be multiplied by the mass of solvent which is equal to 80.8 sorry 80.2 grams now if you calculate this the delta tb comes out to be this comes out to be 0. 018. This will be obviously in Kelvin. Now, uh, please remember that this is delta Tb. Now, major issue that we are going to have, let me just reconfirm this values here 0 0.52 multiplied by 0 0.52 multiplied by 1000 divided by 180 into 80.2. This is equal to 0 0.019. Not eight actually, it is 0 0.019. Okay. Now, after this, the important thing is that they have not asked the depression, sorry, they have not asked the elevation in boiling point. They have asked the boiling point of the solution. Okay. Now, it is dissolved in water. So now you need to plug in the definition of delta Tb. Delta Tb it is equal to the boiling point of the solution minus the boiling point of the solvent. So boiling point of the solution will be equal to the uh, boiling point of the uh, boiling point of the solvent plus the delta t 
So boiling point of the solvent is equal to 100 degrees Celsius plus delta T B is equal to 0 0.019. Again, I, if it is Kelvin, I can directly write degrees Celsius. There is no need to change here anything. Now delta here, the boiling point of the solution will become 100.019 degrees Celsius. So this will be your answer. Please write this down. Let me know once you're done. Anyone still writing? Please let me know. What is writing? Yes. Right next, depression in third colligative property. This delta TM. Delta TM. So we observe that listen. Uh, we observe that when a non volatile. Solute is added to a solvent. Its freezing point decreases. Its freezing point decreases. And this decrease in freezing point. This decrease in freezing point is called depression in freezing point. Uh, the graph of uh, depression in freezing point, it is a bit unusual. It is not as simple as the boiling point curve. Okay, So please see the depression in freezing point. The important uh, thing to understand here before trying to understand the graph is that the liquid is going to, the liquid it is going to uh, get freezed. The solid is already frozen. Huh? Solid is a solid state. So the thing that is getting freezed is what it is? Solvent. So solvent has to freeze. Now the there is curves of different liquid and solid 
if you have water na, so water will have different uh, different vapor pressure this is known as uh, the phase diagram of water what is the pressure and temperature of water at different different uh, what is the pressure and the uh, temperature of water at different different units so when we increase the temperature the vapor pressure is increasing now for frozen solvent as we have seen here so frozen solvent what is happening so this is the plot for frozen solvent so if you are anywhere here na, this is also frozen solvent this is also frozen 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 but as you can see the vapor pressure is also different and the temperature is also different right so all of these points they denote the frozen solvent but as we move here this part here it is liquid it is also liquid this is also liquid so if i if i am on this particular plot or any way away from the solvent if i am in this area if i am in this area of the graph then i am in what in liquid state but if i am in this area then i am in frozen state i am in solid state okay so this line is the one what is this line is something that is differentiating okay that is differentiating now please see also no, by the way uh, if you move above liquid solvent you will get boiling point yeah? that, that is another thing now please see here so we have the solvent the vapor pressure is here and it decreases and it reaches the frozen solvent at this particular point that is why it is known as delta sorry it is known as t not f it is known as t not f that means the freezing point of pure solvent freezing point of pure solvent now one thing that we have seen in relative lowering of vapor pressure is that when we add solute the vapor pressure decreases and because it is the freezing of sol it is the freezing of solvent actually you know, solvent water molecules are going to get frozen so the curve is entirely similar as that of liquid solvent so the curve is same but it is just below the liquid solvent so it follows the same curve and it gets frozen here and this particular point it is the tf that is means the freezing point of the freezing point of the solution you can easily see that the freezing point if i go from solvent to solution it is decreasing that is known as depression freezing point and you can write delta tf it is equal to what is larger here t not f is larger minus tf okay freezing point of solvent is much larger and it has been seen experimentally that delta tf it is also directly proportional to molality and delta tf if i remove the proportionality sign i will get a proportionality constant which is known as kf multiplied by molality molality is nothing but it is equal to wp multiplied by 1000 divided by the molar mass of the solute multiplied by the mass of the solvent in grams mass of the solvent in grams Uh, sir, what is freezing point? Sorry? Uh, what is freezing point? What is freezing point? Uh, yes, sir. No comments. Freezing point is temperature at which liquid converts to solid. Okay, sir. Temperature at liquid converts to solid. But you can't see the same thing for boiling point. Okay, please remember. Because uh, if a liquid is getting converted to vapor, that can also happen at room temperature. But at room temperature, you cannot freeze anything. So freezing point is a definition which involves the uh, conversion of which involves the conversion of liquid state to solid state. But in boiling, you can't see that. Because when we are going from liquid to vapor, that can also happen at room temperature. You know vaporization, evaporation is a process that happens at room temperature. So boiling point has a particular definition that is related to vapor pressure. And, but freezing point it is not directly related to vapor pressure. Jaha baby solvent freeze, jai, freezing point. Okay, simple definition. Now, 
I would not say simple, rather freezing point definition and to analyze freezing point is much more difficult than boiling point because for boiling point, you have a particular criteria. There is no criteria for freezing point. Jabbi wo freeze ho jai, whenever it gets converted to solid, that is going to be the freezing point. Okay. So in that case, the boiling point is more uh, concise in terms of definition, not the freezing point. Okay. So I hope all of you have written this. Now the same things will apply for KF. We are not going to write a large point regarding KF. So KF, what is KF? KF is the KF is the, as you can see, KF is the uh, depression in KF is the depression in freezing point when molality of solution is unity. Unity means when molality is equal to 1. Next point, the unit of Kf, it is going to be the same as that of Kb, Kelvin, Kg per mole. Now, Kf, what is Kf? By the way, Kf is molal uh, freezing point depression constant. And it is also known as cryoscopic constant. Also known as cryoscopic constant. Now, how many of you have had kulfi, like the street kulfi in India? Anyone who has had street, I mean, jo aise kulfi milta hai, the food. But if you have had it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if you have had only one time, then you might not remember it. But sometimes uh, that kulfi is a bit salty. Never happened. So, if you I mean, as a packet, se ke khaya hai. Are no. You no, in that steel thing, right? It is there, I mean, there is a kela, kela mein, steel may have done it. So, we have salty meal. You have to do it. 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 So, what basically they, uh, the cooking is what they do is they add salt in the water and then freeze it. What they do, they add salt inside the water and then they freeze it. Why do they do that? They do it because if I am adding, please see, when I am going to, when I am going to freeze only water. So water will freeze at zero degrees Celsius. But if I freeze salt and water, then salt and water will, the depression, there will be depression in freezing point. So salt and water will, dip, will freeze at, let us suppose minus five degrees Celsius. Okay. It depends on the amount of salt you add. Okay. Now, which is colder, 0 or minus 5? Which is colder, 0 or minus 5? Minus 5 is colder. Minus 5 is colder. That is why this will be good for freezing. This will be, or rather, I should say, better for freezing. Right? Better for freezing. Okay. Now, another, this is one of the, but Kulfi all application, you have a textbook. Kulfi all need you have a textbook. So another example that we have is please, please see. Let us suppose the temperature Celsius and the temperature of the environment right now. The room temperature is snow padi, yeah? We have snow, snowfall. Snowfall. And the temperature is now what? It is zero degrees Celsius. So we will have snow in the roads, right? We will have snow in the roads. Now, in order to de-ice the road, that means in order to remove the snow from the road, what do they do? People they add salt. Now, what does the addition? Please remember, snow it is zero degrees Celsius. Snow freezes at zero degrees Celsius. But as soon as you add, as soon as you add the salt in it, freezing point will decrease. Freezing point will decrease. But the temperature is still zero degrees Celsius. But the freezing point will now becomes minus five. But I, there is some substance. It substance is whose Freezing point is minus 5 degrees Celsius. And the temperature that we have is 0 degrees Celsius. Temperature kya hai, 0 degrees Celsius. 
So at zero degree Celsius, this substance will be liquid or solid. At zero degree Celsius, this substance it will be liquid or solid. Right. Liquid, na? I hope all of you understand this. A substance has a freezing point. Okay, actually, a substance has a freezing point of zero degree Celsius. Or temperature, you have five degree, na? Same thing, right? So obviously, at five degree Celsius, it is going to be liquid. So the snow, it has a freezing point of zero degree Celsius. But when you add salt to it, the freezing point becomes less and becomes minus five. But the temperature outside it is still what zero degree Celsius. That is why what will happen? The snow will get converted easily to water. And salt water and the removal of salt water is much easier. Removal of salt water is much easier. And same thing is done uh, when you have flights, right? The, uh, flight when you have like this, and they have wings. So if they fly through a very cold area or or if there is a cloud or something, so sometimes what happens due to low temperature in the wings of the in the wings of the aeroplane. There will be ice form in order to de-ice it. De-icing of aeroplanes, we say de-ice. Okay, so if in order to remove the ice from the wings of the uh, aeroplanes, we use uh, the application of the depression freezer. So please write two points. First point is that frozen ice, frozen ice on roads. Is melted. Is melted by rain salt slime. NaCl or calcium chloride. By the way, जब NaCl हम कह रहे हैं ना, it is not that वो आप बिल्कुल अपने किचन से उठा के NaCl वाला बात नहीं है, ठीक है? So the kitchen NaCl it is iodized salt. It has iodine in it also. It is also very Um, even though it is very inexpensive, if I talk about different items in our kitchen, but still it is very expensive if you have to spray it in roads, right? So we use very impure form of salt of NaCl or calcium chloride, which depresses the freezing point of water. Next is de-icing. Of aeroplanes, the icing of Europe. Okay. So there is one colligative property that is remaining, which is osmotic pressure. Then we have last topic that is abnormal molar mass. Abnormal molar mass. So, कितने लोग कल स्कूल हैं? How many of you are having school tomorrow? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have school tomorrow. अरे फातू. Who else is having school tomorrow? Shabbos. Anyone else having school tomorrow? Okay, no one is having. Other. Fine. So, baaki log aayenge. Shabbos aur Maryam Khatun. One lecture bacha hai. Aap log usko recording me dekh lijiyega. Okay. I hope that is not a problem, right? So, chakar dikkat nahi to we can take some extra classes after some more. Ye mere dhan me bilkul nahi tha na. So, mazid meri taraf se hone chahiye that. रिमेम्बर हमें ये लग रहा था कि पूरा अगस्त आप लोग के पास खाली है ठीक है एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स उनका खाली भी है पूरा अगस्त तो कुछ लोगों के बारे में बिल्कुल ध्यान नहीं रहा कि कुछ लोगों का बीस को ही खुल जाएगा दस दिन ठीक है अदरवाइज आई वुड हैव स्केड्यूल्ड दीज क्लासेस अ बिट बिफोर ऑल्सो चलिए खैर कोई बात नहीं एक क्लास आप लोग कमी सकता है ऑल्सो एक क्लास नहीं जिन लोग की छुट्टी है ना अभी आई होप आई होप सर देवरा तो हाथ रेस करना था ना देवरा का तो ठीक है चलिए जिनकी स्कूल अब नहीं है जिनका एंड जस्ट पुटिंग अप अ पोल इन योर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप व्हाट चैप्टर शुड आई टेक इन एक्स्ट्रा क्लासेस नाउ ओके फॉर दिस वीक ओनली दैट इज फ्रॉम ट्यूसडे वेंसडे थर्सडे एंड देन सैटरडे एंड संडे ठीक है उसके बाद से आई थिंक सबका स्कूल स्टार्ट हो जाएगा अच्छा रेज योर हैंड इफ योर स्कूल इज स्टार्टिंग ट्वेंटी वन वाले तो बता दिया सबने है ना रेज योर हैंड इफ योर स्कूल इज स्टार्टिंग ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑगस्ट वाले हाथ रेज करें एनी वन विद ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑगस्ट 
शाहिद ओके ओनली शाहिद नो वन एल्स Raise your hand if your school is starting on twenty sixth. Muhammad Tari, twenty sixth August, twenty sixth August. Pia, fine. Okay. अगला सवाल मेरा वही होने वाला था. Now raise your hand if your school is starting on twenty eight August. Raise your hand if your school is starting on or before twenty eight August. On or before twenty eight August. सब हाथ raise कर दे. Twenty one वाले भी कर दे. Twenty six वाले भी कर दे. Twenty eight वाले भी कर दे. Raise your hand. Twenty-eight, no. So, uh, raise your hand. Fia, Maria, Fatu, Dari. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I cannot take any class from twenty. Twenty-eight. So, first, first, which class? Any? Okay. Okay. Fine. So, I have twenty-two to twenty-seven. Twenty-two to twenty-seven, and in between there will be a Friday. In between there will be a Friday. Yeah. So, I have twenty-two. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five is Friday. Twenty-six and twenty-six and twenty-seven. So 